You're watching Inland Sports, your local sports leader. Highlights, interviews, and insight you won't find anywhere else. Brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona and Spoiled. Quick quality oil change in Riverside. Inland Sports hosted by Pep Fernandez. Honored by the Southern California Interscholastic Football Coaches Association, the National Football Foundation, the Inland Empire Baseball Coaches Association, and the CIF Southern Section Champion of Character. Hey, what's up, Pep? Too cool to come down here, man? Too big time now? And welcome to Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. I'm Pep Fernandez. This is David Zink from the Press Enterprise. And we're going to have, we're gonna have a, a weekly show now that's going to kind of preview the week, talk about our inland sports rankings for high school football, and something new, a coach's challenge. Love the coach's challenge. I hope you guys like it too. It's going to be kind of like fantasy football, but it involves local high school football coaches. So we're going to have fun with it, and you guys can play along too and kind of follow us throughout the season. Once again, everything from Inland Sports is brought to you by this place, Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. When you train at Adrenaline, you just turn pro. Adrenalineathletic.com is the website. Check out all their training sessions, their travel ball teams. They kind of do everything. So. Whatever you're looking for, they can make it happen. If you want to take your game to the next level, this is the place. And of course, spoiled, quick quality oil change. You want to keep your body right so you come to Adrenaline, you got to keep your car right as well. So go see our boy Bill Navigato at Spoiled, quick quality oil change in Riverside. He will treat you right, get you in and out in a jiffy. And uh, he's not going to take you to the bank. He's going to do what he's got to do at a fair price, and you will be happy. We guarantee you. We take our cars there. Yeah, so. I, I love the place. Been going there for years. All right. So. We talked about the coach's challenge. The way it works, I know, I know a lot of people are familiar with fantasy football, you draft certain players. Well, for the Inland Sports Coach's Challenge, myself, David Zink, world famous intern Angel, and intern Nick got to select high school football coaches in the Inland area. So we have a team of eight, and we're gonna punch those up right now so you can see who's on what team. That was a crack staff of, uh, of choosing here. You know, it was, a, it was a long process of figuring out the whole coach's challenge, but as it worked out, we all get eight, right? And we, we basically had draft order just like you would a fantasy league. Everybody gets to pick top to bottom. I was the number one draft pick, so that was... So with the number one overall pick, you selected... Matt Logan Centennial. Come on, it all begins and ends at Centennial. We all know <laughs> that, right? So if you're looking right now, you can see which coaches in schools we have. So you can see my list, Angels, Knicks, and of course Zink's there on the end. And Zink, yes, he had the overall number one. He, of course, he picked his boy, Matt Logan. Um, the other number one overalls, I picked uh, Coach Broach. I'm Coach Broach. Over at Heritage, uh, world famous, got Kurt Bruick at Redlands East Valley. And intern Nick got Jim Walker at Redlands because He Nick, stays close to home. Nick goes to Redlands High School. He plays baseball for the Terriers. In fact, but for... But for two teams, he's got all San Bernardino County teams. He really went strong with Our San coaches, Bernardino schools. I should schools. say. We yeah. don't go by teams. We go by coaches. That's right. We're going by coaches. So the way it works is every time coach gets a victory, we get a point. So every time they pick up a win, we're going to keep a weekly tally of, okay, so Kurt Bruick wins a game. That means it's a point for world famous. That's right. If, if Centennial and Matt Logan wins, you get a point. So that's the way it's going to work. So if you win, you get a point. We're going to keep the tallies every single week and kind of add them up. At the end, we want to see who's got the most wins. Who, you know who it's going to be. Who picked the right coaches? So you know who it's going to be, Pat. Well, yeah, it's me. You're looking at him right here. But anyways, so after week zero, yes, not everybody played, so not everyone got points. But after week zero, in case you're counting at home, this guy's got the lead. Uh-oh. Barely. Uh-oh. It's barely, though. It's by one win. Booyah. Matt Logan puts you over the top. I, easily. That one win. So. And it'll be that way at the end of the year, too. Matt Logan's going to make it all good. And we should say, small school, big school, doesn't matter. A win is a win. And by the way, we picked we picked from each level, all the different levels. I got Matt Logan. I got Centennial. I've also got Notre Dame. I mean, we've got schools all across the board. We just pick coaches we thought could do great things. All right, so uh, once again, th those are the rankings. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment because that will have a play in our coaches' challenge as well because uh, as coaches get wins, they're going to make up their way up the rankings. So we'll talk about that in a second. But once again, one more time, here are the teams. So we've got Team Pep, world-famous intern Angel, intern Nick, and Zinc. And we want you to play along. So if you go on Twitter, 
follow us at inland underscore sports and we want you to chime in who's got the best team of coaches which uh, is it me is it zinc is it one of the interns and if you are on the correct team at the end we want to give you prizes we're working on the prizes but we want to give you some great prizes at the end if if you're rolling with the right team and you know they have an advantage they can actually go and pick Eight coaches, and they don't have to pick. They don't have to draft with some with some other people like we did. We had four people. I had one every four. I could pick somebody, but you could just pick your ten or your eight best coaches. Turn around, run with them, see what happens, and at the end of the year, yeah, I'll point us. Let us know. I I, I doubt you will, because I'm a genius, and so is Pat. Well, maybe one of us is here. It's probably you. I'm not saying it's, a genius. No, yeah. Not me. I'm. A, I've got a long, rich history of picking the wrong school. A failure. But for failure. Co- but for Coach Broach and the rest of my coaches, I hope I'm wrong. But once again, so that's the coaches challenge. Every week we'll update you with the scores of who's winning. But we've all got a pretty good group of head coaches that we really like. And then once again, go on Twitter. Let us know which team of coaches you support. Me, Zinc, one of the interns. And if you've got the right team, we're going to give away prizes as well. It'll be fun. All right, so once again, here's the rankings. And, of course, as the coaches win and get points, their teams are going to move up the grade eight and four more rankings. So if you're top ten list, sports, the grade eight and four more. Once again, the number one team is Centennial, and for good reason. They started off their season with a bang, big win over East High School from the Salt Lake City area in Utah. And just picked up where they left. J.J. Taylor, Javon McKinley, Anthony Catalano and company, and your boy Matt Logan, of course. And you, you haven't even seen the entire repertoire of what they have offensively. I mean, you know, we, they had their guys going, and they still got many, many more on that offense that can do a lot of good things for them. Well, they've got Sarah this weekend, uh, actually a Saturday night game in Oceanside as part of that Honor Bowl, so that's really and exciting they, for And them. they lucked out Sarah quarterback was kicked out of the game last week and cannot play this week. Against so, Centennial. Uh, so against Centennial, they're going to be down their quarterback. Now, they might have a great backup, but I know that the uh, Sarah starting quarterback is one heck of a player, and uh, they're going to miss him this week. Well, that's big news then. So uh, Centennial uh, going in, I guess, with the upper hand against Sarah, but of course you got to know Sarah's going to be loaded. So that's Saturday night in Oceanside. Uh, Centennial taking on Sarah. Uh, number two and three, this was a real hot button issue. How could you put... Redlands East Valley ahead of Vista Marietta. And I and I say to David Zink, they won a state title. What else do you want from them? I agree with you. I and this totally is, agree. And, th- and these rankings are really based on what did you do last season? As, you know, as and as we said on the radio show uh, or, uh, last weekend, you know, Vista Marietta is yet to, to play a game. And that's not to say they're going to be a bad team or a good team. We don't know what they're going to be. They're kind of an unknown. They've done well in some uh, preseason stuff. But uh, Rev's already played a game. So, no, they play. They play oh, this Friday. Me, Rev has not yeah. played a game either. But but we do have a defending state champion that is uh, in, in the mix there. That's the thing. Vista and Rev have not played a game, so there can't be any shuffling. If you can't you can't lose a spot by not playing. If we put them at number two or th- number three in Vista's case, come on. It all shake, It all shakes itself out by the end of the year, right? Yes. Eventually, all the cream rises to the top. Rev, they're going to open the season at Chaminade, a little banged up in the receiver core. Um, and Vista Marietta has Ballard High School from the Seattle area. So both teams will open up. Who knows? This could change uh, when we do the inland sports. Play eight four more next week. It'll be interesting to see if Vista Marietta starts out with the Greeley brothers uh, running that offense. Uh, if you have Kate Greeley as quarterback, correct? Yeah. And it may, Carson, it, Carson Greeley. Carson Greeley. And Kate's the receiver. Kate but you got receiver. Kyle Williams. I mean, what are you going to do with that guy? But you got all those all those tools that you can go with. And then you look at four. You got Norco with uh, 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 Victor Veramanis, who just went crazy last week in a 66 to 13, I believe, victory. I mean, it was just a really, really easy win for Norco. Uh, shouldn't have been. Etiwanda's a very good team, yeah. but, but they handed it to them. And this weekend, they'll be playing a Friday night 7.30 game against Rancho Cucamonga where they're going to try and get back uh, a victory that they, they, they lost a close one to them last season. Yeah. And as you see, Victor running down the sideline, he is just a machine. Built like a linebacker, runs like a running back. And loves to truck defenders. Oh, man. So vicious, Vic. Uh, you can see he could throw the ball. He was eluding pressure to get passes off. And, of course, he could run it with the best of them. There he goes again, um, coming up against Etiwanda. This, he's just breaking loose for another touchdown. Like you said, 66-13 to against a good Etiwanda team. And uh, some Rancho, uh, that Rancho Cucamonga game, 
dating back to last year, this is one they want to get. I think it was a point loss last year. I think it was just a one or two point win for Ranch Cucamonga. So it's going to be a hotly contested game. I and mean, you can see Fox figured it out. Fox Sports West figured it out. And they really want that game on TV. So we'll have to wait and see how that one goes. But uh, I'm going to say Norco's fortunes this season are going to be much better than they were last season. You know, you drop down to five, you got Heritage. I yeah. mean, another great team. You know what? There were some other rankings out there. I won't say who. Press Enterprise. But they had great Okaheta Heritage. And what did Heritage do? They went on the road. We talked to uh, Brett, the quarterback, Brett Virgil from Heritage, and he talked about it. They went on the road, and they really held Great Oak to, what was it, like seven points until the final minute of the game. So the defense, the offense, Brett Virgil did his thing. I mean, they all kind of showed up in that Great Oak game, and Heritage has a really strong team. On the road against a Southwestern League team. First Southwestern League victory for Heritage. Yeah. And there's Jalen Glover, their star running back. Um, he had a huge game. Javier Luna, um, he's another running back to watch this season for Heritage. But it was uh, hashtag Brett the quarterback. The rest of the guys, Aleva Hippo, we got to mention him. Jalen Glover and a huge win against Great Oak in week zero. And this week they've got Los Osos. So we'll see what they follow up with that 35-13 uh, to 13 victory against Great Oak. Checking in at number six, we had Citrus Hill. Of course, they won the Battle of the Rancho Berry. David Zink, you were at that game. A barn burner. Impressed by Citrus Hill? Very much so. More impressed by uh, by, by uh, Devin um, Floyd. Devin Floyd, yeah. Devin Floyd went for a lot of yards. Everything. There he goes, right I mean, there. Everything up the gut. He really didn't run a lot outside. He was taking on defenders and uh, hitting the hole and getting in there. I mean, three touchdowns, 251 yards rushing the ball. I mean, he was the reason they won. Defense did well, but it was a one-touchdown game, and at the end of the game, when they needed it, I think they had a seven- or eight-play drive, and he probably carried the ball five times and pushed them down the field and into the end zone for the win. That's their second win against uh, Rancho Verde, their first win in the Battle of the Torch. They split it. Uh, they've split it so far. Last year, Rancho won it. They won it this year. But they did beat them in the playoffs, the quarterfinals last year. So they actually, in the last two, uh, two seasons, are 2-1 and one against uh, Rancho Verde, a very good Rancho Verde team. So Citrus Hill staying strong at number six um, in our grade eight and four more inland sports rankings. Then we have a little bit of our first movement of the season as Rancho Verde drops from seven to eight because of the loss. Uh, Carter High School moves up. They had an impressive week zero victory against a good Los Osos team. 30 to three was the final score. And uh, Carter gets Rialto High School this this Friday, and uh, that will likely be another win for the Lions, and people are pointing to Carter to maybe be that one team to challenge Redlands East Valley for that Citrus Belt League Championship, and they've got the dudes. They've got a lot of great players, D1 caliber college players on this team. And, and the attitude. As they came in studio and talked to us on the show, they were really, really high on who, who they are and what they're doing this season. And uh, I don't think they're afraid of Rancho Verde. I don't think Rancho Verde's afraid of them either, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that game goes. Uh, Rancho Verde, I, at this point, I would consider a veteran playoff type team, and it'll be really tough to go and, and, and beat uh, Rancho Verde, or excuse me, Redlands East Valley. But, uh, you know, I, if there's any team that can, I would say Carter's one of them. They've got some dudes. Uh, so, once again, Rancho Verde drops to number eight because of that loss, in, uh, to that loss to Citrus Hill. And, and speaking of the Hawks, their week one game will come against Murrieta Valley. And uh, the Nighthawks kind of flying under the radar. We don't have them in our four more at this point, but they could be very, very soon because they got off to a great start against Temescal Canyon. And they've got a star player in Quincy Wimbish. How about three touchdowns, 118 yards on the ground. There goes Quincy right there. Big time playmaker. And how about Murrieta Valley's freshman quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer. He was 12 of 19, 253 yards, two touchdowns in that 34 to 19 win against Temescal Canyon. So Citrus Hill, I mean, this could be another tough game for Citrus Hill if, if Murrieta Valley is this good. And there goes Quincy once again with another touchdown. I believe it will be a tough game. Uh, uh, except for the fact you got a freshman quarterback, uh, you know, not a lot of experience at the varsity level. But uh, if anybody, if anybody has a pedigree, it's him. And for Rancho Verde, they will take their talents down to Murrieta Mesa. Uh, Mesa coming off a win in Hawaii last week, so we'll see if uh, Jeff Steinberg and the Mustangs can bounce back against the Rams. And our uh, four more. That's the Grade Eight. Here's the four more. We've got San Gorgonio, Paloma Valley, Redlands, and Chaparral. Um, Red, go ahead. Marietta Valley can't even crack the 12 
I, I think we need they're to on the cusp. I guess right this there. week will be a big indicator for us as to whether they are one of those those four it, more, or maybe they're even in the grade eight. I mean, they it, go out and beat they go out and beat uh, uh, Citrus Hill. Citrus Hill, and I think you have to give them a, a, a little you know a vote of confidence, yeah. even with a loss. If a it's close a loss, line, yeah. A close loss, you probably still find them in our in our four more. I'm sure there's somebody there that's going to step on their or stub their toe this week. Well, Chaparral's 1-0. That's a team to watch as well. Uh, coming off that big win against uh, La Quinta and their opener for head coach Jeremy McCall. Of course, Redlands, we talked a lot about this on the show this past Saturday on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Uh, we had Jim Walker on talking about a 44-13 win against Santiago. So we'll see if the Terriers can keep that up. They've got a good Palm Springs team this week, so we'll see if they can improve the two. And Chaparral's got Riverside Poly, who made it to the, uh, the Inland Division That's final. That's right. Good call. So they got they got they got Riverside Poly, and uh, you know Riverside Poly's got a lot of questions with their program as to whether they can re uh, regroup and uh, and reload for the 2015 season. They got a new coach, and they've got a lot of new players that are going to be contributing. But we'll have to wait and see because they've yet to play a game, so we don't know where they're coming from yet. We don't know what uh, what Poly has, but that'll certainly be a great game. Chaparral Poly. In week one, uh, San G, they beat up on Citrus Valley in week zero. They've got Kaiser, which uh, should be a pretty good game in week one. And uh, finally, last but not least, we were talking about Paloma Valley. And I know you like JW North a lot. And Paloma Valley able to beat JW North by a final score of 34 nada. So I'm impressed or what? I've, I've been, uh, you know, I've always said that Paloma is – Always been one of those teams that you look at and you go, man, they're good, but they, they tend not to, to, at the end of the season, seem to show. But you know what? I think this is a different year for them. I, after talking to Coach Esposito and seeing what they did last week, we'll have to wait and see. But it looks like they've got potential to do a lot of good things this year. And uh, they got the great uniforms, new uniforms, first yeah. new uniforms in 11 years. And, you know, you got the coach, the old ball coach on the sideline wearing uh, slacks and a white And he told me he shirt. shaved, no, told, yeah. no goatee. And he's got, he's got a white shirt and a nice nice tie, all the guys dressed in it. I think he's making it a more professional setting for those kids. And I don't know, maybe that'll change things. I don't know if that does anything on the field, but it definitely makes them feel better about themselves. Well, I'll tell you this, that one-two punch of uh, DeMarco Pruitt and Kyrie Joyner, they're going to be tough to stop at Paloma Valley, and uh, you you did a story recently at North. You liked what you saw. You thought they were turning a corner, and so for Paloma Valley to beat them 34 zip, I mean maybe Paloma Valley is just that good. Well, to be fair, I knew that they were. I mean, they they North is coming from a long way back. They're really building that program back up, and I was just talking about the fact that Mike Lawson, a former North star played at UNLV, was trying to bring that offense back and bring back some of the talent and, and put them in situations to do good things. And I think they will do good things. They, they will finish better than they did last year. Yet, they have a really tough preseason before they get into the, in the Valley League, and it just keeps going on. I mean, they got Corona this week, and they just keep going. They've got some really tough games in preseason before they get to the league. Uh, they'd be lucky if they're one and four going into league with the schedule that they put together. So that's the grade eight and four more inland sports show rankings. And as you can see, there's a lot of teams um, maybe on the cusp. Those four more, those are four pretty good more. So we'll see. Uh, and there's probably another eight after that, Pep. There could be. It, it was tough. It was tough to get it's this It's always eight. tough. I mean, some teams, like you said, they didn't even play. So you win or lose, you can't move up or down. We just had to keep them where they're, uh, where they're well, at. And, but and we could have movement this week. As weeks move on, it all shakes itself out. Yeah. I think preseason's a great time just to see how people stack up against other leagues and other teams. And then when we get into league, it's when it really gets serious because that's where you really, you know, basically show your medal to get yourself into the playoffs. So that's the grade eight and four more. And one more time, this is the Coach's Challenge. Please follow us on Twitter at Inland underscore sports. Tell us which team of coaches you like. Who's going to win this thing at the end? Remember, we get wins. We get points for every one of these coaches that also wins. Kind of like fantasy football, but at the high school level with coaches. So please, <laughs> please follow along on Twitter as well. Well, I'm Pep Fernandez, and for David Zink from the Press Enterprise, we appreciate you watching this uh, Inland Sports Show special. We plan to do it every week. Update Absolutely. the rankings, update the coaches' challenge scores, and have fun with it so you guys can follow along. And also, as you saw, kind of preview the games that are coming up that, that Thursday and Friday as well. Everything brought to you by Spoiled, Quick Quality Oil Change in Riverside, and Adrenaline Athletic Training, where we are at right now doing the show. We appreciate their support as well. David Zink.
I'm Pep Fernandez, and we will see you again next time on Inland Sports, Saturday, 1 p.m. this week, because of college football on Fox Sports Radio. So we'll see you at 1 o'clock for, <laughs> for the Inland Sports Show.